Private Lender Podcast, Episode 50. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Aristotle Onassis, who said, If women didn't exist, all the money in the world would have no meaning. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Two seven five four eight. She watched. She said, "I'll add it up to zero and nothing in her head." Welcome to episode fifty of the Private Lender Podcast, the only investing podcast whose southern white suburban host likes to quote Public Enemy lyrics to open the show. That's because everyone is welcome here at the Private Lender Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to creating successful private lenders and an alternative economy where people like you and me can passively invest in things like real estate without banks or Wall Street brokers. My name is Keith Baker, and I'll be your host for this episode. So if there's anything I can do to make your listening experience more enjoyable, please just let me know. Today, I've decided to do an episode for the borrowers and not so much the lenders today, but there's good information for both camps. So today's topic, I'm going to be speaking about lending scams and the obvious and not so obvious ways to avoid them. Conventional wisdom says that folks are basically decent but it seems that we only read about the exceptions and there are plenty out there. But before we get into the heart of the matter, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor. This episode of the Private Lender Podcast is proudly sponsored by CountyTaxSaleApp.org. With CountyTaxSaleApp.org, you get a very powerful lead generation tool in the palm of your hand, on your laptop, desktop, or any device you choose. Get real-time alerts for between 300 and 600 properties every month that are coming up for the foreclosure auction in Harris County, Texas, the third largest county in the United States. With this intuitive design and interface, the County Tax Sale app lets you search all properties with highly motivated sellers that are coming up for foreclosure auction. Simply search the map and click on a property to learn important details about that property, such as the address, owner's contact info, minimum bid, and a street view photo. You can save properties to your favorites and contact the sellers directly and receive email and text alerts if one of your favorite properties is redeemed or canceled prior to the auction. You can even listen to Sammy Gupta on episode 28 of this podcast as he discusses all the powerful features and benefits of countytaxsaleapp.org. For more information, go to the Private Lender Podcast sponsor page, the show notes page for this episode, or to countytaxsaleapp.org. That's countytaxsaleapp.org. And I'd like to thank CountyTaxSaleApp.org and 713REA.com for their continued support of this great experiment called the Private Lender Podcast. Before we get into it today, I do want to have a thank you. I'd like to give out to some strangers, to all of the people on United Flight 4703 out of Williston. A couple of days ago, all of you that uh, volunteered to take the voucher and stay the night in a snowstorm and allow the rest of us to take off and get home to our families. I just want to say thank you very, very much. And I hope that you enjoy whatever destination that voucher provides for you. That was a very cool thing to do. And I got home to see my kids and my wife. And I just want to say thanks to all those volunteers on flight 4703. Anyway. Okay. So lending scams. How many times do you go to Facebook or Instagram or on the bigger pocket forum? For example, sometimes I'll see complaints or lamentations about lending scams. And some of them, the obvious ones are, I think we've all received the emails about the Nigerian prince or some rich uncle in the Middle East and you can get a cut of $5 million, whatever. But you go to Facebook and you see, you know, hey, I'm a private lender or I'm a hard money lender and I can get you anything from 20000 to $5 million, asset-based lending only, yada, yada, yada. And there's going to be like a Gmail or a Hotmail account. Some of these people are legitimate. I, for one, I used to do my lending out of a Yahoo account. Now, the difference between me and this guy on Facebook, I was not advertising. I could lend you millions of dollars. In fact, I wasn't even advertising. I wasn't putting it out there that, hey, I've got money to lend. And if someone is going to get a commission and is going to broker a deal and get a commission on $5 million, even if it's only like one point, that's enough money to where I'm thinking in my head, you can take that 50 grand, go to GoDaddy and get you a legitimate email address, a company URL and a company email address. 
and you wouldn't have to rely on Yahoo or Hotmail is one of my favorite ones to see. Not necessarily a dead giveaway, but something to look at. It's something to consider, especially if they're a hard money lender and they're using Hotmail or Gmail. Not to say that some legitimate businesses, do they do use that. And I know some people that, that still do. However, they do have websites so they have proper companies and they have insurance policies in place and employees and things like that. So something to look at. And then, of course, one of my favorite, the, that generic stock photo of somebody smiling and they're trying to play it off like it's themselves. And it just reeks much like that email from the Nigerian prince. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's something that just kind of viscerally hits you. And these are the kind of the obvious ones, I think. You can just tell, you know, if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, it smells like a duck, it probably is. So anyhow, that's just a couple of examples. What I'd like to talk about now is ways that you, the borrower, can not get into any types of lending scams. Because sometimes people get to the closing table and find out that their lender's a piece of crap or is all of a sudden going to require something to where they've got you over the barrel. I mean, banks have done this to people as well. And I know it's errors and omissions or whatever, or we forgot to get this, we have to get that. I get it. Some of it's legitimate, but sometimes there are crooks out there trying to lend money. And there's also crooks out there who are trying to do houses and try to buy it several times and borrow from other people different times and get money and never pay it back. So buyer beware, lender beware, investor beware, for sure. One of the things that I would recommend is that if a lender is asking you for fees up front, that's a red flag. The only fees that you should be paying up front are appraisal fees, perhaps a property inspection, because that's a legitimate expense that is part of the loan and I require people to pay those services and those documents. However, they don't pay me. They pay the appraiser. I don't get a cut of that. I have a panel of appraisers that, you know, you can choose one of these people, talk to them, see which ones you like better or whatever, but it's going to be, we're going to use my appraiser if it's my money, bottom line. So the borrower will pay the appraiser directly. I don't see the money. I don't need the money. That's fine. And same thing, if I do require an inspection, and if I don't see the house, sometimes I like to require an inspection just to get another set of eyes on it and some photos and a little narrative of the condition of the house. But again, I would never take that money and pay the inspector. I have a panel of inspectors. Of course, Kevin's my, my number one, but I would have them take a choice. They pay the inspector directly. I don't see or touch a dime. There's no reason for me to do that. So that would be a red flag right up front. The next thing is to keep yourself safe as a borrower is when you go to, when it do comes time to put money, to pay some money, you don't give it to the lender directly. You give it to, let's use a, an example of you're closing at a title company, which I always require because a title company has escrow accounts. So any money that I pay goes into escrow, right? If something happens at the last minute and we decide not to do the deal, that money comes back. I still have access. There's a third party, independent third party who's handling those funds. And so as a borrower, I would never give money to the lender or never provide anybody money outside of an appraiser or an inspector or some third party service that maybe it's a septic inspection or whatever. The list goes on and on, but never give the money to the borrower. Give it to, put it in escrow. Never give money outside of escrow. Always have escrow. It's a little safety net for you. Never provide money outside of escrow. So when I say escrow, I mean, usually it's a title company. You're probably wondering, well, what about closing at an attorney's office? And that's fine. As long as it's an escrow and as long as it's my attorney, I don't have a problem with that. Right? I don't have a problem with that. Or at least it's an attorney that I've been able to vet because I don't necessarily tell people where, what title companies or attorneys they have to use. That's going to be their choice. But I do want to know of the attorney, make sure I want to do my own little due diligence on them, see what the history of the firm and knowing that, okay, if they're going to hold money in escrow, they know how to play by the rules, just like the title company. So that's a pretty strong bet that things will go the way they should. That's about it. You can see forms everywhere, lending scams. And unfortunately, people that you see around you in your city, every now and again, you get a bad apple. Someone makes a, borrows a bunch of money and they leave. Or someone is quote unquote a lender and basically shuffles money out from you or takes the deal, knows that it's a bad deal and takes the deal anyway, just to take it back or basically let you do all the, as the investor, you do all the footwork or it makes the terms impossible to you know have it be a successful loan. Some of the things that you need to look out for and just be on your toes and trust your gut. At the end of the day, trust your gut. You can go get all the references about people, but trust your gut. Trust your gut. Never pay money outside of escrow and be suspicious of, of anybody who wants to loan you money, but they need money first. All right. So, okay. My little rant is over. 
Next solo cast, my plan is to talk about lenders' fees, much like this, but on the closing costs and what used to be called the HUD-1 or the HUD statement, which I, at the moment, I can't remember, <laughs> settlement document or whatever they call it now, but the HUD-1, we'll talk about those fees and what's reasonable and where you can shave some costs away if you're so inclined, but we'll get to that on the next solo cast. So if you could, again, please go check out countytaxsaleapp.org and 713rea.com and you know, go support them, the sponsors of the show here. Really do appreciate it. Please continue to email questions to keith at privatelenderpodcast.com. And of course, please help other people just like you find the show. Please go rate and review and give me an honest review. I would love five stars, but if, if it's a one star, fine. Give it to me. I want to review. I want to hear feedback from people. And please spread the word. Connect with me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Bigger Pockets. And of course, you can always catch me at privatelenderpodcast.com. Hopefully, that website will be looking a little different here in the very, very near, very near future. And of course, please go to privatelenderacademy.com and sign up to get on the waiting list so that you can find out all the good news when I am able to finally get everything together. I'm still hoping to launch something for you in January. It won't be a cost, at least initially. I hope I'm trying to get a really just kick-ass cool roadmap put together for everyone that just kind of lays everything out and then keep going with the Academy and perhaps some type of like a tribe of lenders group. And anyway, a lot of stuff going on in my head. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I know I've gone off on a few rants and forgot what I was saying, but I do appreciate you sharing your time with me today. And I wish you happy and prosperous investing in lending. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.